I really like Diego matrices. They're just so nice and easy to work with. And I've already told you a bunch of the algebraic properties that make diagonal matrices so nice. But in this video, I want to begin with showing why diagonal matrices are nice geometrically and easy to visualize the transformations. In fact, it's so nice that even if we have a matrix that is not diagonal, then I'm going to try to take that matrix and diagonalize it. In which case, I'll be able to show you the kind of cool geometric things that happen to a diagonalizable matrix. So let's begin here with this specific diagonal matrix, the 2, 0, 0, 1 half. Now, if I take this matrix and I multiply it to any particular vector, what it does is it takes the x component and multiplies it by 2, and the y component and multiplies it by a half. And so it's going to look like this. And so I get that kind of stretching of 2 in the horizontal and stretching by a half in the vertical. And then diagonal matrices are also nice because they're really easy to invert. For example, the inverse of that matrix is just taking all the things along the diagonal and taking one over them. So this is the matrix 1 half 0, 0, 2. And then if I think about what that diagonal matrix does, well, it takes the horizontal parts and it squishes it by this factor of half and it stretches by a factor of 2 the vertical parts. And we get something like this, taking it back exactly where we began. All right, so that's pretty nice. And in fact, diagonal matrices, you could think of them in very large numbers of dimensions. And you could sort of visualize them to some extent by saying whatever axis you happen to be on, then you're going to stretch along that particular axis by whatever the scaling factor is at that component along the diagonal. But what about a matrix that's not quite as nice? How about this one here? Now, it's not that I can't visualize this. Indeed, I can visualize this particular matrix. It's going to look a little bit like this. That is, the 1, 0, the first basis vector, went to 5 quarters, 3 quarters, and 0, 1, the second basis vector, went to 3 quarters, 5 quarters. So I can indeed visualize it, but I think it's just a little bit messier. Uh, let's watch it one more time. I, I start in this sort of nice standard basis, and then all of my grid lines, they both get closer together, and they're going to move around. They're going to transform. So I can do this in two dimensions and visualize it quite well, but if it was a large number of dimensions and all sorts of things were happening at the same time, it would be kind of hard to keep track of it. And that's why we want to deal with eigenvalues, eigenvectors, diagonalization. We want to think of complicated transformations in an easier way. So let's go and look at the eigenvalues and eigenvectors for this particular matrix. Here they are here. And these give me these eigenvalue eigenvector pairs. So for instance, corresponding to the eigenvalue two, I have an eigenvector 1, 1, and what that does is when the matrix applies to 1, 1, it just multiplies that vector by 2. And likewise, I've got this eigenvalue, the 1 half, and if I have the corresponding eigenvector minus 1, 1, when I multiply the matrix to it, it just stretches it by a factor of a half. There's this compression. Now, I'm not going to show you how to come up with the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. Algebraically, I've got a previous video for that, but the key point is this. When I look at an eigenvector, this is a direction where the matrix applies in a very simple way. It's just a stretching factor, kind of like we had with diagonal matrices. For diagonal matrices, it was very simple. It was just stretching the standard basis vectors. For eigenvector eigenvalue pairs in those specific directions, the matrix just works by stretching as well. All right, so now let me draw the plane, but now I'm going to draw the plane where the grid lines, the coordinate system is going to come from these eigenvectors. So here it is. As in, I put in the 1, 1, the first eigenvector, I put in the minus 1, 1, the second eigenvector, and I've drawn a grid system that corresponds to it. Now, I haven't applied my transformation yet. Indeed, I've just taken a different choice of the lines that I want to draw on the screen. I could have drawn the standard basis lines, but I've chosen to draw these ones. All right, I'm going to show now how this particular grid system transforms under the application of this matrix. But I want you to pause the video first and just Think about it yourselves. That's all right, I'll just wait over here. You just pause. You think about how this is going to transform. All right, so here's the answer. It looks like this. So what happened is that if I looked at the yellow grid lines, which originally began separated by one copy of the 1, 1 basis vector, so what happened is that when I took the 1, 1 vector and it got multiplied by 2, the separation between the yellow grid lines also got multiplied by a factor of 2. All right, so what we've seen is that if I can go to eigenvalues and eigenvectors, and I can write a grid system based on those, that sometimes my matrices can look a little bit nicer. But I want to go even further. Let's go and try to diagonalize a matrix. Now, the process is going to be this. I've taken my matrix, and I've written it as a PDP inverse. 
And I've got previous videos for that if you want to look into how I came up with that particular product and how to algebraically execute the computation to fill it in. But the key thing is this. We're just going to go and have for the P matrix, it's just going to be the eigenvectors. And then for the diagonal matrix, along that main diagonal are just the corresponding eigenvalues in the same order in which the eigenvectors appear in P. And in P inverse, you just take the inverse of that particular matrix. So what we have here is a product of three matrices of which the middle one is a diagonal matrix. Okay, so our goal here is to try to understand this as some statement about transformations, a composition of three transformations that's geometrically going to go do stuff. We want to be able to trace that. Now, I want to analyze this a little bit further. So the first point is, let me come up here and look at this 1, 1, minus 1 matrix. Now, if I take that matrix and I apply it to any particular vector, like say C1, C2, what it does by the definition of what multiplication by matrix is, it is taking a linear combination of the columns of this matrix, a linear combination, in this case, of the eigenvectors. So this is the kind of matrix we've seen as a transformation of basis. That what it does when we multiply by this particular P matrix is it, it takes a vector C1, C2 that is written in that so-called eigenbasis, a basis of eigenvectors, and it converts it to the standard basis. That is, this is a change of basis matrix that takes vectors that are written in the eigenbasis and writes them into the standard basis. Now, if that's what the P does, well, what about the P inverse? The P inverse goes the other way around. It takes vectors written in the standard basis and rewrites them in this eigenbasis, the basis of eigenvectors that I've chosen in this particular order. Note, by the way, that there's several choices for diagonalization. I could take this 1, 1 and say have 2, 2 instead. That would be perfectly fine. I can permute the order of them. So the exact presentation of these is not unique. But nonetheless, I have a basis of eigenvectors, and I'm going to apply it in this particular case. Also note, you can't always do this. It's not the case that you can always find a basis of eigenvectors. That's going to be a big talk for us moving forward. All right, so now when I look at what's going on, this three different matrices multiplied are three different transformations. The P inverse is this one that's going to convert it from the standard basis to the eigenbasis. Then I do something diagonal, and finally I convert back into the standard basis. So let's trace it geometrically. Now this is indeed the standard basis. For example, the one eigenvector is 1, 1, and it's sort of written in the way you would write it in the standard basis. And I've given this entire grid system based on these two different vectors, but it's all written in the standard basis. Now I'm going to go and apply the P inverse matrix. And what this does is it converts it to the eigenbasis, the basis that is represented by these different eigenvectors. Now, notice, from the perspective of someone living in the eigenbasis, somebody who spent their whole life hanging out in this particular basis, this is how they would draw it. It looks like the standard coordinate system, but it's not. It's how someone in the eigenbasis would think about it. This one step to the right denotes go one along this particular eigenvector. All right, well, now that I'm hanging out in the eigenbasis where everything looks really nice in the perspective of someone living in the eigenbasis, I'm gonna apply my D matrix. My D matrix is diagonal, so it's really easy to see what happens. It's just going to be this stretching factor by two horizontally, this compression factor by a half vertically. As in, my transformation is just a diagonal one when I'm in the eigenbasis. And then I have to multiply by my P, and so that's going to convert me back into the standard basis. Off I go, and out I get to this result that we've seen this output before. So what we have is these three stages. Number one, convert from the standard basis to the eigenbasis. Number two, transform diagonally, which is really nice, in the eigenbasis. And step three, convert back into the standard basis. Another way I want to visualize it is I want to run both of these in parallel. Okay, on the top I've drawn the eigenvectors in the standard basis, and on the bottom I've drawn the eigenvectors in their own basis. So in their own basis it looks like a sort of horizontal and vertical grid, but in the standard basis they're off that. They're at the 1, 1 and the minus 1, 1. Now, let me go and apply my transformation. First to the top, first in the standard basis. So it goes along and it stretches out nicely as we've seen before. And then down here in the eigenbasis, it's just diagonal. The same transformation is diagonal in this eigenbasis, so it just stretches horizontally, compresses vertically, and I'm going to get something like this.